What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtues Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we uh, apprehended Dio, the murderer of the old woman, and locked him away in a treatment pod, which is pretty intense. But uh, now we're going to look for Clover and Tamioji because they have been gone a very long time, and now we're even a little bit suspicious that they've stolen Quark's bracelet. So we've got to find them pretty quickly. Now we're taking a look at the pantry. So Sigma inquires, this is the pantry? So it would appear. Pretty intense pantry, if you ask me. Well, looks like they're not here. When we started looking for Quark, they were they were sent off to search everything beyond the red door. Which would have meant this room. Not gonna do us any good to hang around here, though. Let's head upstairs. Very well. Yeah, I mean, if they're not in here, we can't find them. Let's go beyond wherever this room is and and see if we find them there. Nope, looks like we exit the red door and... Hopefully they're back in the warehouse. Hopefully. I want to trust Clover and Tenoji. This feels like a everybody's gonna die sort of route. I think showing the map is a, is a decent idea. I do think these transitions can take a little bit long, though. Alright, into the lounge. Do we find Clover and Temyoji here? No one here either, huh? Tenmyoji loves scotch so much, I thought we might find him here drinking some. It was around that time that I noticed Kay was acting strangely. He was staring at the shelf of alcohol in a way that I probably would have described as blankly if I could have actually seen his eyes. Hey, what's up? You want a drink? Oh, no. Well, I would enjoy a drink with this mask. Right. Sorry, that sucks. Honestly, I'd gotten so used to the suit, I'd kind of forgotten you were wearing it. Why the heck did they make you wear that thing anyway? You still don't remember anything? Well, actually... I did remember a little. Interesting. Really? Yes. What did you remember? My father. When dad you remember that? Did it just pop up out of nowhere? Come on, Sigma. Please, don't joke. This is serious. Sorry. So, you remembered who your father was? Yes. What about your mom? I don't seem to have one. I... Oh. So your dad raised you? Well... K backstory? K stopped for a moment, then calmly folded his hands in front of him. Oh! <gasps> It's baby K! It's baby K with his little armor and his little suit! I was raised in the facility where my father worked. He was the only person who worked there, which meant he was the only person I saw until I was older. Really? That had been the situation for as long as I could remember, though, so I never thought it odd. He wouldn't allow me to go near him while he was working, but the only times he wasn't working were the times when he was sleeping. As such, the only communication I had was with the education software he'd given me. I suppose I was a fairly expressionless child then. We developed body language to communicate with others, and with no one else to communicate with, I suppose it makes sense. 
Once I learned to read and write, I began to realize that my situation was not normal. Many of my books mentioned a mother as part of a family, and in several, the mother, father, and children would eat meals together and talk to one another. Soon I found myself longing for a mother of my own. Someone who would always be with me, who would scold me if I did something wrong. At night, they would read to me before bedtime. If only I had a mother like that, I thought, I would be so happy. So, for the first time in my life, I asked my father for something. He had finished working and, as usual, was making his way toward his bedroom when I stopped him and asked for a mother. He looked at me silently for a long moment before finally responding, Okay. I remember to this day how happy I was at that moment. A few months later, he called me into his laboratory. It was the first time he'd ever done anything like that. My heart was beating quickly as I stepped inside. Standing next to him was a young woman, and my hopes soared. But when he said her name, or rather, her ID number, they were dashed. He had given me a robot to play the part of a mother. I didn't want a mother that was just a machine who did what a human told her to. When I told my father that, he looked surprised for the first time in my life. Then he frowned, coughed, and admonished me for being a whiner. He never scolded me for anything before. At first I was surprised, then angry. Hot tears streamed down my face. My father ordered the robot to take care of me, and shoot us out of his lab. The robot was very convincing, and she smiled and spoke as if she was a real person, but I refused to answer her and locked myself in my room. You can talk to a robot, and it will respond, but in the end, you're still talking to a machine, not a person. If that was what I'd wanted, I still had the education software my father had given me. When I ignored the robot as it tried to take care of me, it looked sad. It couldn't really be sad, of course, it was only programmed to look that way. A robot's facade of sadness didn't mean anything to me. I guess part of this is all backgrounded with the question of, is K a a robot? Is Sigma a robot, right? After that, I stopped expecting anything from my father. We'd never really spoken to begin with, so it was easy enough for me to make sure we never saw one another. I lived my life as if he didn't even exist. Perhaps it seems strange to you that I continue to live with him, but I never considered leaving. Perhaps in the hidden depths of my heart, I longed for a relationship with my father. Everything changed when I was 18. I left my room one morning to find a woman standing outside of it, and this figure, incredibly blurry, reminds me of the old woman. She was the first human I'd ever seen, apart from my father, and I was understandably surprised. For a moment, I thought my father had created a new robot, but when I told her that, she laughed and explained that she had come to help him. It's interesting. How can... What part of the world is so isolated that somebody grows up to the age of 18 only seeing one human throughout their entire life? Right? That's clearly an age that's different from that that we're familiar with, that Sigma's familiar with. As it turned out, she was a very mysterious person. She was much older than I was, but something about the way she behaved was almost girlish. She would tell me stories about the world outside in such a way that I was never sure if she was telling the truth or making up fantastic lies. Ultimately though, the truth didn't matter. I loved her stories. She wasn't helping my father directly with his research, so I spent most of my days with her. Before long I discovered she'd known my father when he was young. She told me stories of how he'd fallen in love as a younger man, and I began to imagine that the person he'd fallen in love with had been her, and that she was, in fact, secretly my mother. After she settled in with us, our long-established routine began to change drastically. First, we started to eat together. This is also noteworthy because this imagery is clearly the lounge that we're in right now. This is a warehouse that Kay was probably raised in, right? or one of many warehouses like the one that Kay was raised in, indicative of what the world is like in the outside. First, we started to eat together. Before then, I had never shared a meal with anyone in 18 years. She scolded me for my table manners, or more accurately, the lack thereof. If I was going to eat with others, she said, I would need to be more polite. Having eaten alone for my entire life, manners had never been something I'd even thought about. My father got in trouble too, 
when he made the mistake of reading through research papers during dinner. The look of surprise and embarrassment on his face made me burst into laughter. I couldn't remember the last time I'd shared a laugh with my father. It might have been the first time. The room we considered our living room changed too. Before it had just been another room, but she made it comfortable. After we finished our dinner, I would sit on the sofa and relax with her and my father. Those times were the ones I cherished the most. For a little while, every day I got the family I longed for ever since I was a child. At her suggestion, I started help with my father's research. He specialized in genetic engineering, and I discovered I had an interest in it as well. Time faded away as I lost myself in research. Now that we were working and studying together, my father and I had a great deal to talk about. For the first time in my life, we began to speak with one another like a father and son. Do I recognize this room that's being described in the background? I don't think so. Whenever I impressed him with something I would learned, I felt a surge of happiness and it drove me to study even harder. My days felt full, right, and meaningful, but most importantly, I was happy. Four years passed in the blink of an eye until one day I happened to overhear my father and the woman speaking in the laboratory. Yeah, this woman is almost certainly um, the old woman that we saw killed earlier. And who is the father? Oh my gosh, if it's like Junbei and Akane, their tone was serious, so I listened closer, curious to know what they were talking about. That was when I heard her say that she planned to give her life to achieve their goals. It was clear that she wasn't being metaphorical. She would have to die. I was in shock. The research I'd thrown myself into would lead to her death? I asked my father to stop his research immediately. He refused to listen. She agreed with him. What? She told me that she had been prepared for what she had to do since the day she came to our facility. My father had known about it from the beginning as well. Angry and disappointed, I began to investigate what exactly the research I had been helping with was working toward. Perhaps, I thought, I could figure out a way to keep her alive. I discovered much more than I would bargained for. To begin with, I learned that the ultimate success of my father's research would require a good deal of sacrifice. And I also learned that my own existence was just another part of his project. Yeah, that's not too surprising. I had been created to function as my father's spare. Kay had been created to function as his father's spare. Wow! If he died during his research, I was intended to continue it in his place. I was stunned. I was furious with my father, and with her, and even with the research I'd poured myself into for four years. There was only one thing to do, destroy the facility and end my father's horrible research once and for all. I made plans to destroy the main reactor and with it the entire facility. But she saw right through me. My father was livid and locked me in my room until his research was complete. All I could think of was how I might stop him. It's also interesting to think that if K was made as a spare, right? It lends credence to the idea that K is actually still just a machine, just a robot. Anyways, she did her best to convince me that I'd misunderstood, that everything would be fine. As much as I wanted to believe her, I remembered in the back of my mind that she had been the one who pushed me to become involved in my father's research. Had that been an earnest desire to give me something to do with my life, or... Still, I couldn't bring myself to hate her. She had given me a reason to live. Even if she had conspired with my father to mold me into his replacement, the warmth she'd shown me had been real. She'd made me feel as if I had a real family, and that was something I wouldn't have given up for the world. I pleaded with her to leave, but she quietly shook her head. There was someone very special to her, she told me. He had saved her life once, and she felt her death would help to repay that favor. Huh, there was someone very special to her who had saved her life and her death would repay that favor. How does this work? She would have liked nothing more than to marry him and live a happy, normal life together, but she couldn't. For his sake, she said, for the sake of the future she had wanted, she was determined to see my father's research succeed. 
I realized then that although she was the most important person in my life, there was someone more important than me and hers. She tried to explain that beyond what we could see was a future where no one would have to die, but I refused to listen. What good was a potential future to me? It was what I had now that I wanted. I couldn't stand to think that she would give her life for a man I'd never even seen. So I shut myself off from the world. Perhaps that is why I lost my memory. Kay let out a deep, tired sigh. I'm sorry. I lost track of time. It's okay. Yeah, and in fact, really, thank you so much for sharing, right? It's a big deal that you've regained some of your memories, but they're not memories that are easy to talk about either. So, it's incredibly meaningful that you decided to share them. Not having any memories is less than desirable, but it could be argued that regaining them is almost more taxing. Yeah, obviously, depending on what those memories might be. So you remember almost everything? No, the details are still indistinct. Especially more recent events. Huh? Um, Sigma, I'm sorry, but... Would it be alright if I laid down for a bit? What's wrong? I don't feel very well. It must be because I remembered so much so quickly. My head feels like it's going to explode. Are you okay? Yes. I think I just need to rest. Okay. Because, well, I mean, we haven't figured out what happened with Luna and Alice. Um, we we think Alice also was in infected with Radical Six, like Quark. It's possible K is as well. It's also possible K is entirely a machine and can't be infected with something like Radical Six. But it's also somewhat feasible that the process of regaining memories can be incredibly taxing. So it's not out of the realm of you know feasibility that K wants to lay down for a bit. However we're not exactly in a safe environment, right? Clover and Temyoji are still unaccounted for, and three people have died so far, one of which was likely this woman that Kay grew to love as a mother figure in his life. And we still have a lot to figure out, right? Take as long as you need. I'll go look for Clover and Temyoji myself. I'm sorry. Thank you. I get the impression this is the last we're going to see of K in this timeline. <laughs> Just, maybe it's the skeptic in me, but I don't think this timeline is going to lead to a lot of life at the end of the game. K lowered himself heavily onto the red sofa in the corner of the room. Well, guess I'd better get moving then. I stepped out of the room and nearly ran into Fi. What are you doing? You're supposed to be waiting back in the warehouse. Yeah, I know. I just decided to go check on you guys. I waited a long time and nobody showed up. Not unreasonable. Judging by your face, you haven't found them either. Darn. Yeah. Where's Kay? He's in the lounge. You decided to split up? Well, not quite. Instead of waiting for my answer, she opened the door to the lounge and walked in. Again, very reasonable thing to do. For the killer on the loose? Why well, trust, you know, Sigma's word when you can literally walk in and see. What's up with him? I guess he's not feeling too well. He said he wanted to rest for a bit. Is he alright? I think so. We should leave him alone right now, though. Remember, there's a real person inside that suit. I'm sure he's just tired. 
Tired, huh? Sigma, how are you feeling? What? I feel tired just looking at you. Your face is like a weak old sock. Really? Well, I guess I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little exhausted. I mean, all of a sudden I wake up trapped in some weird game, and then dead bodies start turning up. Honestly, I'm amazed I've managed to hold on to my sanity for this long. Just about everything here makes absolutely zero sense. The more I try and figure any of it out, the more I feel like my brain's just going to melt and run out my ears. You know what I'm talking about, right? We managed to figure out who the killer was, but there's still a hundred other questions we have no idea about. Where the heck are we? Why are we even here? What's this whole nonary game thing for? And what is Zero Senior up to? And then there are a lot of the smaller questions, like... What happened with Quark? Where is Quark's bracelet? What happened with Alice? Why did Luna die? Why was... did she have an injection mark? What's up with Dio and him stealing the, the Neostigmine? What did he intend to do for that? Who's ordering him and why? Heck, how about who Zero Senior is? The rabbit said he was one of us, but... Do you think it's Dio? Who knows? Besides, we still don't know why Dio killed them. He said he was ordered to do it, but... Then there's more, too. What about the old lady? Who is she? What's her deal? Heck, what are any of our deals? I don't know crap about anybody here. I don't even know anything about you, Fi. Are you serious? You can't honestly suspect me, can you? No, that's not it. I'm just like you. I was kidnapped on December 25th and brought here too. She trailed off. What was that noise? You heard that, right? Yeah. It came from the hallway. Let's go have a look. I'm very curious. What is going on? There's nobody here. Maybe they got on the elevator? Let's try hitting the button. If the door doesn't open immediately, then we'll know the elevator's downstairs. It's a good point. Yeah, so whoever it was, they must have gone downstairs with the elevator. Thought so. Let's go. Oh boy. Embrace yourself. Quark's on the loose? Dio's on the loose? Clover? Tenyoji on the loose? Are we gonna get another Clover ending? If so, that might be it might be a favorite already. <laughs> and again, we're posed with, you know, the different doors. Which way? Where do you think they went? Let's just head for the green door. Why? Because the treatment center's there. I guess, yeah, if you're concerned about Dio and Quark, that's where you'd want to go. That's where Dio and Quark are. There's also the question of, you know, the, what is it, the Qualum Alley or, or, or Gollum Alley is that way. And so maybe whatever suspicious activity is going around, um, it's related to that room. So maybe this is a good place to start. Uh, so? You aren't worried? I just want to make sure they're safe. They're fine. Temyoji or Clover probably made that noise. Exactly, and we don't know if we can trust Temyoji or Clover Sigma. Get with the program! Well, maybe both of them. But I don't think they'd hurt Quark or Dio. Are you sure? Huh? Dio admitted to killing the old woman, but he still insists that he didn't kill Alice or Luna. What if he's telling the truth? Are you serious? You're gonna believe him? It doesn't matter, I just want to know if they're safe. 
Yeah, and Sigma, it's not like she's believing him so much as considering the possibility and taking safe action as a result. No harm in being careful. Alright, fine. There really hasn't been a lot about the, you know, morphogenetic field timeline shenanigans in this particular timeline so far. Here we go. Whose body are we going to find this time? We headed to the first pod. Interesting. I cracked open the top and lifted it back. This is where Quark should be. Quark is there. There was Quark, sound asleep. See? Yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, make sure he's alive still. That's probably getting worried for nothing. How about Dio? Let's open his. Still locked. What? What the heck? So, Dio's dead. Sigma, Miyako. Check his pulse. It was pointless to check his pulse. He was obviously dead, but I did it anyway. Yeah, he's dead. Miro. Look, oxygen level 0%. Status, dead. The oxygen level for his pod says 0%, and I mean, the way he's holding his neck makes it seem like he asphyxiated, but... Then that means he asphyxiated. But why? Someone must have tampered with the pod and lowered the oxygen levels. Who? Someone did, and it's not K, and it's presumably not Quark. It could be. It could be, but it's presumably not Quark. Which really leaves Tenyoji or Clover, right? Part of what's kind of nice about this timeline is that Alice and Luna are dead. It clears them for all the activity that happens afterwards, unless one of them was faking their deaths, which is very possible, um, likely on the Luna end of things. Luna could be running around, alive, having faked her own death, but if Luna and Alice are believed to be dead, it clears them from all, you know, of this ill will in the other timelines too. But Dio's dead. Dio is dead. Look, we should go tell Kay about this. Come on, let's go. Yeah, you gotta you gotta haul, man. <laughs> you gotta move fast. Your life could be on the line. Kay's life could be on the line. Without waiting for me to follow, Phi turned and ran off. There's the chance, actually no, there's no chance Dio killed himself. This confirms that Alice and Luna, well it doesn't confirm, it just significantly increases the probability that whoever killed Dio also killed Alice and Luna, and thus Dio really was telling the truth there. Without waiting for me to follow, Phi turned and ran off. I took a deep breath and followed. It is possible that Phi did the killing of Dio, right? Or did the killing of, killed Dio, right? Um because we don't know where she was prior to finding Sigma. She could have gone to that room and, and killed him. It's possible. Fi and I burst in the lounge and ran up to Kay. Kay, wake up. Something's happened. When he didn't move, I grabbed him by the shoulders and shook. He twitched and quickly sat up. Whew. What is it? We explained about how we'd found Dio dead, and how it looked like he died of asphyxiation. It appeared that someone had reduced the oxygen level of his pod to zero. What? But... why? Are we gonna get like a Dio redemption arc where it turns out he's actually here trying to, you know, motivated to do something good? I don't know. Is Tenyoji... I'm trying to think of who everyone is. Is Temyoji the researcher? Related to K? Is the old woman the... 
the lady that, you know, was Kay's mother figure, almost certainly. Why, you know, Clover is on a mission of sorts. Hmm. Oh, I'm so curious. Why? But why? I thought that Dio was the one who killed the old woman, Alice, and Luna. I called it. They were going to get too content with having captured Dio. Then who killed him? If he was the murderer? The only people who could have done it are Clover and Temyoji. There's also Quark. What? No. That's impossible. Are you suggesting Quark woke up, opened his pod from the inside, killed Dio, and then went back to sleep? No, I'm just saying that strictly speaking, it's a possibility. People have a really difficult time with this with Fi. The number of times she says, well, something is a possibility, everybody's like, are you accusing me of this? Or are you, do you believe him? What? And she's like, no, I'm just saying it's a possibility. Chill. So just, you know, take it into consideration. Well... In that case, fine. I hate to say it, but doesn't that mean you could have done it? Me? Yes. You could have done it any time after Sigma and I left the Floor B warehouse. Oi, oi. Don't give me that. Alright, well, hey, she's so adamantly opposing it. Uh, how about some evidence? I was waiting for Clover and Temyoji to show up. Yeah, I mean, that's what we presumably think too. But it doesn't mean it's not a possibility that you're lying. They never did though, so I got impatient and went to find you guys. Then I bumped into Sigma in front of the lounge. It is worth noting the elevator mechanic is is important, right? Because it means that somebody had to have gone down to that floor prior to Phi and Sigma, you know, coming going down there as well. If there's only one elevator up from each floor, that's a really big deal because it means that whoever's down whoever went down there before we visited is still down there, right? or was still down there when we went down. If I went down to kill Dio and then came back, the elevator would still be up. Unless somebody else went down and stayed down for whatever reason. So that, I guess, takes some suspicion away from Fi. But anyways, she went on to explain about the sound we'd heard. I see. So you heard something. Then perhaps it is likely that Clover and Temyoji were at fault. Were the two of you together the whole time you were investigating? Yes, we were. You never split up or anything? Nope. Hmm. In any event, we don't have a great deal of time to discuss it. You know, I'm wondering... The old woman in Kay's memory said that she needed to die for the sake of the research, right? To bring it to fruition. What does that mean? Because she's died in this nonary game. It's very possible that she and, you know, this researcher were aware of the different timelines, consciousness, the future events, and as a result, anticipated the nonary game and knew that her participation was crucial to doing something or more importantly that she would have to participate and be killed by Dio in order for something in particular to happen hmm can't quite piece it all together but that's something to consider anyways Kay says in any event we don't have a great deal of time to discuss it yeah, you've only got seven minutes. Oh, crap! You've only got seven minutes until the primary doors open. Alright. Let's get back to the Floor B warehouse. Maybe Clover and Temyoji are already there. 
Oh, where is Dio's bracelet? His what? Huh? It was there, I noted. You didn't take it? Dio was a green solo. Fai and I are the magenta pair. Crap. You're right. Without Dio's bracelet, we won't be able to open the secondary door. I fear not. Then we need to hurry. We'll drop by the treatment center on the way back and grab the bracelet. All three of us don't need to go. I mean, it's not like it's not like Sigma's gonna do anything on his own, right? Um, let's see. Clover and Temyoji are the Cyan pair, right? Oh, so I guess they could pair up with Solo, or Solo Red. But isn't Solo Red? Is that? Yeah, that is Sigma. So I guess theoretically, if Temyoji and Clover were waiting back in the warehouse, Sigma could. It's not necessary for them to go. But if they're not there, it could be dangerous for him to split up. You two go on ahead. I'll get the bracelet. Alright. I don't know if it's best for Fi to go as well. Oh, one other thing. I need to give you these. The yellow pair of bracelets? Were these Alice and Luna's? Yes. Without these, you would be stuck. So... Here you are. Please take them. I grabbed the, brace the bracelets and shoved them into my pocket. Alright, let's get going. Yeah, this is incredibly complicated. <laughs> what a timeline, guys. What a timeline. Crap. They're not here. Maybe they did go through the door like Kay said. With Quark's bracelet? Or... or what? Oh, come on, man. You better not give me that... Maybe they're already dead, crap. I got enough of it from Dio. Now it's, it's very possible that they're dead. You've got to be kidding me. This isn't funny, Fi. If you're right, then you, K, Quark, and I are the only people still alive in here. Hey, lay off. I want to believe they're alive too, but we heard a noise and turned. Moment of truth? It's probably K. Yeah. I apologize for keeping you. Did you get Dio's bracelet? Well... Technically, yes, but... But what? Best you just see it. This is what I found in Dio's pod. <laughs> what? Huh? A broken... A broken bracelet. So we can't even confirm that this is Dio's, right? It technically could be Quark's. It's broken. I guess there's no harm in trying to break it if the person wearing it's already dead. Or there's nobody wearing it at all, you know, to poison, right? What the heck? I assume whoever murdered Dio did this. Meaning, they certainly don't want Phi and Kay going through the, the white door. But why? There's no point. I can't say for sure. But if I were to guess, it is worth noting Kay could have done this to the bracelet. It is possible. I don't think Kay is likely the person killing everyone, given how much time we've been spending with him. But... But still... Great. <laughs> Just great. Chromatic doors have opened. Five minutes remain until chromatic doors close. Maybe this will act as a bait to bring Clover and Temyoji back? Or whoever the killer is? I don't know. 
Right now, Sigma is presumably the only person who can go through a white door. Right? I mean, they're gonna try and see, I'm sure, if Dio's bracelet works, but... With the bracelet like this, I doubt we can get past the secondary door. That would mean the only way to actually explore all of the secondary doors here would be to have Sigma go through each and every one of them individually. That means K and I will... Oh no. Crap. You're... you're gonna... When the time comes, those three doors will automatically close. If anyone's left outside after they close, they'll... They'll be penalized. Yikes. I see. That's what they wanted. Whoever killed Dio wanted to use the game to kill me and K. That's why they broke the bracelet. I think so. I think so. It makes the most sense. Yeah, I mean... Presumably, that would rule out K or Phi as the murderer of Dio. It's gotta be Temyoji or Clover, right? How can you be so calm? In five minutes, you're gonna be... be... Sigma. Go on ahead, Sigma. You have those bracelets K gave you, right? You should be able to get through the secondary door with those. I'm so curious. Who is trying to kill everyone in the Nonary game? I'm almost thinking that somebody's here trying to kill the participants of the Nonary game so that the person or people operating the Nonary game can't get whatever result they're trying to get out of it. So just... Screw that. You know I can't just ditch you guys like that. But if you stay here, you'll... Think I don't know that? What kind of a monster am I if I just leave you here to die? A rational one. Darn it. This was bad. What was I going to do? I needed to calm down. Just calm down. Calm down and think. Yeah, this is the time to uh, access one of those other timelines. There had to be a way to save them. There had... Here we go. To be continued. There had to be a way to save them. The only thing I can think of is... Hmm... How else could they get through the door? I really don't know. Right? Also, shout out to filling up the, all the save data slots now. <laughs> wow. Quite the timeline here. This was actually a really exciting one. Probably one of my favorites so far. That was intense. That was very intense. It's also worth noting we haven't unlocked any of the other locks that we've run into with any of the information. And we gained a lot of information, so that's quite the surprise. So the next time we do play, we're going to make another big branch decision going back all the way to here where we go into the chromatic doors. We're not going to choose the blue door and instead do something else. I also was thinking about it. And um, of course, there are nine timelines. <laughs> Right? Or I guess nine of these main branches that are actually... No, there, there are nine that have locks potentially. I got like an achievement that said you unlock the eighth lock. It was a pretty funny achievement. But no, there aren't just like nine timelines. Hmm. It looks like there are 18 of them. Presumably nine of them are meaningful, nine of them are just ends, you know, bad game overs, but yeah, what a timeline. I can't even think of a, like a way that we could save Phi and, D and, and K here. It has to be something we change about locking Dio away, right? We have to handle that differently if we really want to save those two, right? If we need to preserve that bracelet. That's all I can think of, but... Anyways, I think we're going to call it there and say that in the next episode, we're going to go back and choose a different chromatic door, solve a puzzle, you know, do an escape room for the first time in a while, and get back to when things were a little bit less chaotic. But what a timeline. I really enjoyed this one. 
And I hope you guys did too, but of course, looking forward to trying to get some more answers um, in, in the next episode. But until the next episode, this has been Night Zero, and this mission is complete. Thank <laughs> you.